Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by a copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Salam alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. If you're decent enough at it, you'll have like 20, 30, 40, 50 extra lives by like <laughs> level two, right? <laughs> If you're the way that the way they're teaching it, it's like trying to play uh, Battletoads, which is like the hardest game ever made. <laughs> so by level three, you can't even survive. You know, it's just like, you know, like you're dead, you're dead, you're dead. I mean, it's like they're making it, they're not, they're not explaining, uh, you know, the, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, even, you even explain go beyond explaining it, like actually practice it, practice mercy. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, Achi is like all this just strange, weird talk. And you see the problems happening. Everywhere a Muslim goes, that community is supposed to get better inherently because you're a Muslim, right? That's how it's supposed to be. So now you see, uh, you know, for example, in the Black community, we have like Black people, the Black communities are suffering with, with drugs and, you know, and uh, violence and whatnot. And you go in, into the community and you're giving lectures on the fic of, of cutting your toenails or something some crazy. Like, yeah. like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, mm. what, like you're not, you don't, you don't improve where you go, number one. You lock the people out, number two. And number three, your own kids end up suffering because of this, this stuff, All right? And anybody can talk about mercy. Any old, even Christians talk about mercy, right? But it's another thing to exemplify it and practice it and you know be when 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 people think about mercy they think about you directly you see what i'm saying to be to be the the like the uh what you call it the exemplification of mercy on earth that, that's a different thing anybody can talk bro but we have to we have to go beyond the, just the talking now because again the Muslim community has some serious 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 problems and it's because of this stuff here and it's only going to get worse if it doesn't get addressed. <clears throat> no, I completely agree, and uh, you know it's it's going to take a lot of uh, a lot of work on the ground. You know, it's going to take a lot of uh, you know research and. You no, know, like you said, being compassionate and uh, realizing that, uh, yeah, I mean, you're going to have, uh, you know, Muslims, young Muslims who are, you know, struggling, you know, dealing with drugs and, and alcohol and, you know, the haram lifestyle. And, you know, um, we have to, you know, keep pushing for the idea that, you know, like we need to be merciful and we need to, you know, like show uh, the right way and foster an environment, you know, where they feel like they can get cleaned up and, you know, get their life uh, back in order and get the job skills that they need, you know, to, you know, to, to get back. That's another thing too. When I converted, you know, like I, my life, my career didn't go anywhere because I didn't know any skills. And I would kept telling, you know, going to post-secondary education is haram because you're going to have to pay student loans. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All this stuff, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So, you know, and you can't, you can't get a yeah. job because, uh, you know, we have Joma and all this, you know what I mean? You can't work Fridays. We got Joma. All this, all this, craziness they tell us right and then our family is looking at us like what the heck are you doing like do you know where you live you see what i'm saying yeah and, and in reality you shouldn't be you should only be talking to a convert about you know and uh salat making the salat how to teach them make the salat and uh you know after that everything kind of falls in from the five pillars, you know what I mean? You start from the very core of Islam. You wanna you wanna go and teach teach these new Muslims about riba on his first day of <laughs> being a Muslim. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and riba is well, riba, of course, riba is a big, it's big, big, big sin. 
right? Mm -hmm. It's a major, major sin, right? And it's it's one of the um, the big things that causes societies to collapse in general. But somebody who just became Muslim yesterday, like, why are you teaching this person that? Well, yeah. I don't think it's so. I, I don't think it might not even be that he's teaching them firsthand. It might be something that they hear in a khutbah mm-hmm. or a talim, mm-hmm. and no one really explains it to them. You know, like so they're they're hearing this, you know, in a Juma prayer. And no one's, you know, like, like, oh man, I got student loans to pay, and now the sheikh is telling me that if, you know, like, uh, you know, like, uh, if I if if one engages in riba, it's like someone who's who's been touched by shaitan, and then you start to, you know, then you start to really think, oh man, can I really be Muslim if I have all these loans to pay off and all this interest to pay, and mm-hmm. can I really go to school and without, uh, you know, an imam or you know, like a well knowledgeable person to mm-hmm. give you guidance. You know, like um, they're gonna think, yeah, this is this is too difficult to, uh, for me. It's difficult enough for born Muslims to handle this stuff, you know. And then you know, throw on top of the fact that you're a convert that you want to try to weed through that. It's 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 a, it's a huge challenge. But we're up to the challenge, and we want to change things for the better for everybody. I mean, like um, we don't want an exclusive group. We want to interact with all uh, Muslims. Mm-hmm. Um, and we want to have more collaboration uh, with uh, with Black Canadian and Black American Muslims, uh, so we can work on these things together. I know we talked about this when I was when you did my interview in Islam for Europeans, but um, Malcolm X mentioned the idea in his autobiography of um, all white groups to fight against uh, racism. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I, I don't know if he would have extrapolated that to um, white Muslims, or if it's because he didn't, there weren't already white converts at the time that he was around after he came back from Hajj. Um, but I think that uh, definitely collaboration is uh, definitely necessary. But I don't want it to be an exclusivist group where it's like, you know, like, you know, um, there's no uh, integration whatsoever. I think that it's important to, you know, like uh, collaborate on these issues and realize that. Um, that the problems, there's a lot of overlap, but at the same time, you know, there are other issues that are qualitatively different. Mm. Um, so how do you feel about that, Bilal? No, I'm, I'm 100% like with that, you know, even that's that's how you get things done. That's how the, the Sahaba actually work, right? Even when the Prophet mm. says, when he went to battle for, for jihad, right? He had his uh, battalions, the Muhajirun would be with the Muhajirun, the Ansar would be with the Ansar, whatever, right? That's how he organized them because he knew that there was trust within these communities, right? And when when it came to down to the nitty gritty, mm-hmm. they were all working together, even though they had their separate battalions, they're working together to, to, to accomplish a common goal, right? In in battle, right? And that's pretty much like what this is, what this is, right? You have your white community, you have your black community, mm-hmm. right? However, what we see happening is like, uh, especially with the Easterners, there, there, there is no common goal. There's, their goal is to try to basically build up their own separate communities. We are trying to build up, uh, you know, Islam as a whole, right? You see what I'm saying? And we're addressing, we're trying to address these issues that are just blatant in your face issues that nobody's saying anything about. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah it's, it's something that has to be done and there has to be like an end game to it. Right. And for yeah. for for um for us, you know, the end game is to, you know, obviously I I personally believe that all Western countries can actually become Muslim countries. I believe that I don't think it's impossible. I do believe it is actually possible, right? And it, but it just requires cooperation, and that's the thing that we're missing, right? We need to work with the Pakistanis. We need to work with the Somalians. We need to work with the Egyptians and the Palestinians, but they have to have the will and the the what you call it the desire to work with us. And with other people, if they if they still have yeah. this this type of uh, thing, this thing in them, where they're just kind of sticking, trying to build these these societies, uh, you know, within their own communities in Canada, it's not gonna work. It's just not gonna happen, <laughs> right? 
It's not going to happen. You've been doing this for the last 30 years. It's not working now. What makes you think things are going to be different? All you're doing is replenishing your specific groups through immigration, and that's it. There's no expansion happening. You need to expand. You need to call these people in the West to Islam and, and be welcoming to them. If you don't, then Allah will replace you. And that's what's happening right now. We see them being replaced. Look at your kids. That I, did, did I chase your kids away from Islam? The, you know, no, I didn't do that. The brother Rob chased the kids away from Islam. No, you, even the, the society here, they themselves didn't chase your kids away from Islam. They didn't. It's you guys. You guys come, on, come out here with your corny stuff, right? And trying to make your corny stuff look good. And it just looks corny. That's all it looks like. It looks like a bunch of corn, like a cornfield, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I'm in, I'm, in a, I'm in agreement. I mean, they need, something definitely has to be done. Um, w- but we are seeing positive things happening. Like there are a lot of people who are showing interest uh, in our group. Um, there are several Europeans who have converted to Islam uh from the far even from the far right wow. um joram van Klaveren was a dutch politician who was in an anti-islam party mm. and we were we didn't do any we, this wasn't our doing but he you know had all these anti-islam questions about islam that he's you know wanted to know about because he was going to write a book on uh, on anti-islam or getting islam out of europe mm. so he sent you know uh, all these questions to um abdul hakim marat Mm-hmm. And he and Abdul Hakim Murad came back with like a 19 page, you know, like essay on like answering all these questions about Islam. And they ended up converting. Mm-hmm. Um, there's also, yeah, so there's also a lot of people that we know who, you know, converted or converting to uh, Islam who used to be in, in nationalist groups. And even, and I'm not going to name names, but high profile uh, nationalists that we're talking to who are pro Islam, mm-hmm. anti neoliberal wars. Mm-hmm. anti-zionism anti um degeneracy and even they are admitting like yeah i mean like islam has a lot of great things going for it and it's a a, a structure that uh, you know can um keep a society uh, alive and thriving mm-hmm. and you know we have people from all walks of life supporting the idea like yeah like this is this is good i mean this will you know like um help acclimate uh, converts uh, uh, a lot better so um, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's going to, the knee jerk reaction, like you said, there's going to be people who are going to be kind of opposed to this <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we want their feedback too. You know, like we don't, I'm, you know, available to reach out, you know, on Twitter on Robert of Canada, you know, or on Facebook, uh, you know, Robert Lee, if you have any, you know, definitely if, if anyone who's, you know, is curious or you know, like the, they're kind of opposed to the idea, we want to hear and, you know, discuss these things so that moving forward. Um, you know, we're hearing input uh, from the uh, from the black community. So, so any other uh, uh, stories you have to tell us? Oh, a whole bunch. I'm just trying to think of the the, the best funniest ones. I mean, um, um, wow, I just have so many. Um, I'm just trying to think of some of the funny stuff. I mean, I'm, um. That's something that's going to come to me. Okay, well, one brother that I know, because um, this this happened like secondhand, so I don't want to I don't want to tell anything wrong. But uh, oh man, hmm. Oh yeah. So when I um, I think this is a couple years after I converted. I had like a a cold and like a sore throat or whatever, right? And, and I was coughing up phlegm and everything. And my family, I was living with my family. Family, and my dad has a lot of comedian friends. One of my uh, dad's friends, you know, like yeah, he's a well-known uh, friend of ours. His wife is Jewish, and uh, you know, like he's a juggler. He has like this long beard and stuff. And he knew that I converted to Islam. Like it, actually, it, it was my dad was telling everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know, like uh, you know, like uh, you know, this even even that's Dawa. You know, like because you know, like they know that you're Muslim. And you try to be on your best behavior. So we were hanging out, and I it was just like. All of a sudden, I had this big phlegm in my throat. I'm just like, oh, right? So, and then my dad's friend was just like, wow, I only thought the Jews pronounced it that way. (laughs) (laughs) 
So being with the comedy family, like you hear jokes like this all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then I remember one time I was at the, you know, my parents, actually, I don't I think, it was, no, no, I wasn't there for this. My mom was taking tickets for the comedy club and everything. And my mom is very sweethearted and, you know, like she has no problem with me being Muslim and everything. And she's very curious about it. And she was taking people's IDs to get into the, into the bar. Right. Mm. So this one, these young Arab couple, they walk in mm. and she's like, Oh, can I see some ID? So she looks at their ID, looks at the guy's ID. And then she's like, Oh, you have an Arabic name. Are you Muslim? My son's Muslim. He converted. Mm -hmm. So this guy was actually like an Arab Christian mm -hmm. who hated Muslims. <laughs> So he, my, he gave her an earful. He's just like, oh, why would he convert to that religion? All he do is chop people's heads off. And well, yeah. He that's gave her like what, an earful. That's what he said. Of course he said that, yeah. <laughs> so afterwards, my mom told me this story, and I'm just like, yep, you uh, you learned your lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess the... How many heads have whole, you chopped off since you became Muslim, though? Uh, zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> Still working your way up. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I, Me too. Um, I haven't chopped I play lot, kids either, but you know, I, I, I play a lot of Contra and, uh, you know, like, uh, old video games. So yeah, I don't yeah. know if that counts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So the little stories like that, I mean, growing up in a comedy family, like, um, you know, like you once in a while, the comedians would say it's like an, an anti-Islam joke. And mm -hmm. it was very rare though. I mean, like for the most part, you know, like it was, very supportive and it was back in the day where you know you didn't have all these politics around you know yeah. uh islam and stuff it was kind of like mid 2000s and mm -hmm. most people in canada didn't think muslims did 9 11 ever anyway so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know like you know cool like i remember one right. time like yeah yeah i remember you know um but yeah one comedian friend of my dad's like he told like a muslim anti-muslim joke or whatever and you didn't get much of a laugh really like you know the whole the crowd wasn't you know they would like someone you know like they didn't laugh because they thought it was you know pretty hateful and stuff and mm -hmm. he didn't know that um i was muslim at the time mm -hmm. and then my dad you know i guess sat him down had a talk and stuff or whatever and then the next day like he showed up i went to like you know a dinner he showed up and he, he shook my hand and he was like he looked at me like you know like you know I, I do apologize but you know what i said and stuff so yeah, yeah. that that's the daily struggles you kind of have to, to go through. And, you know, it's, it's different work than, um, you know, like the, what it takes, you know, to be like a, an immigrant Muslim or first gen Muslim, it's a different kind of work. It's quiet work. You know, you're not going to be able to talk about Islam sometimes at all to these people. It, a lot of it, it is, you know, just, just, you know, um, being on your, following the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and, um, you know, having good adab, uh, mm -hmm. and then, you know, like, Hopefully, inshallah, they, they 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 turn around. But like I said, it's not everyone that's like this. Like I was talking to uh, another imam from Chatham who opened up another mosque um, on the other end of town, and then we were having a din we were at a dinner, and then he said flat out, like and this brother is from Palestine. He, he said flat out, you know, like um, people don't like us here, just flat out. He's just like you know, yeah. And I know that like it's not you know like that everybody hates Muslims. Like it's a range. Like you have some people yeah. who have positive image of Islam, some people who are neutral, some who have no problem with Muslims and some who hate Muslims. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to explain it to him. Just like, no, like I grew up in this, you know, the community my whole life. Mm -hmm. I know that, you know, like um, there are people that are on our side. And then he was like, no, very, very few. And I just thought in my head, you know, what? this Rob, this is not an argument that you're going to win. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like it, it's difficult to change their opinions about it and you know what you can't to tell them that it's not like this that mm. it's not as bad as you think it is it comes off like i said as really callous because mm. you don't you haven't lived um you really haven't lived their experience and mm. a lot of these you know like uh white converts they, they they take the take on these white savior roles like you know we'll make them the head of the mosque or whatever and yeah, yeah. there's it's just a square peg for a round hole. They're not going to be able to address the issues that uh, that they're going through because they're not that from. They're not from that community. They're not Pakistani. They're not Arab. They're not an immigrant Muslim. They're not. If they're a brother, they're not visibly Muslim, mm -hmm. um, and they don't have the same a lot of the same advantages that a lot of these other Muslims do. So um, that's why we're taking an alternative approach. Let's just work on our people. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, at the same time, we're still interacting with the Muslim community. We're still praying with them. We're still fasting with them, mm. but, uh, let's do our part, uh, mm. to, um, to make, uh, to make this uh, place a, a better world. No, you are exactly 100%, bro. 100%. Thanks. Any, any other final thoughts? Yeah, you can uh, go on. Uh, I'm on Twitter. If you want to, uh, you want to message me directly, Robert of Canada. Uh, Islam for Europeans, Islam, the number four Europeans.com is our website. Uh, we have a YouTube channel. Uh, that's the same name, Islam, the number four in Europeans. Please check out Brother Bilal, my interview with Brother Bilal. So we did the inverse uh, interview last time. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Um, and that's pretty much all I have uh, for today. And uh, um, you want me to sign the uh, Marval Bilal or? Again? Or any uh, impersonation. Say, 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 say that again. Or Howard Cassell, which one? <laughs> you want me to do an imper- uh, sign off with an impersonation of <laughs> Howard Cassell or Marv Albert? <laughs> You're gonna do impersonations now. <laughs> Pick one, man. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sure. I can. I can do a little Marv Albert. Let me just uh, hold on a second here. Can you still hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Here's James on a fade. Rebound. Thompson back to LeBron. Fakes the three, then shoots it. And- this is Marv Albert coming to you from the Staples Arena where LeBron James takes on Steph Curry in the NBA Finals. I'm your host, Marv Albert, alongside Charles Barkley and the czar, Mark Fratillo. And we're going down to courtside. Let's take a, let's take a look at who we have playing today. Oh, yes, it's LeBron James taking on the Milwaukee Bucks. We're going to have a message from your sponsors, and then we'll be right back. I'm Marv Albert. I'm Ron James, taking on the Milwaukee Bucks. Zakhla Khadashek, well, thank you for coming on the features. It was a great honor and a pleasure. And uh, Thanks for having me. Likewise. Zakhla Khadashek, and we hope, um, you know, Allah blesses uh, you with uh, the success in helping the Muslim convert, Euro, uh, European Muslim convert community address their issues. And uh, may Allah bless you and reward you. Ameen. Ameen, ameen. And then uh, same same thing to you and, and to your uh, community, Brother Bilal. We wish you the absolute best and avoid, uh, and avoid uh, hellfire by will of Allah. And that's, that's, that's our, our main goal. Hopefully we can all get there safe, inshallah. I mean, I mean, I mean, exactly. Uh, family, don't forget to hit me up on Patreon, like, subscribe, share, and check out Brother Robert on Islam for Europeans. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. There is no evidence of the presence of these hijackers. It is simply something that the FBI tells us, without any proof. There is no proof. There is no way to prove the presence of any one of these patsies, these scapegoats on the planes. None at all. On September the 16th, one of the alleged hijackers of Flight 11, Abdel Aziz Al Amari, went to the Jeddah consulate to protest his innocence to U.S. officers. Al Omari, a pilot from Saudi Airlines, receives an official apology from the American officers in Riyadh. Then, on the 22nd of September, Walid al Shahiri announces he is still alive. He too is supposed to have hijacked Flight 11. From his house in Casablanca, Morocco, the impertinent al Shahiri declares his innocence. The following day, the 23rd of September, the Daily Telegraph publishes the protestations of innocence of Saeed al Gamdi and Ahmed al Nami, both of them still alive and well, and pilots for Saudi Arabian Airlines. On the 27th of September, CBS tracks down Salem Al-Hazbi. According to the FBI, 
He was dead after Flight 77 crashed into the Pentagon. But curiously, he persists in hanging around alive in Saudi Arabia, where he works in an oil refinery. We have the names of Al Omari, Al Shahiri, Al Gamdi, Al Nami, and Al Hazbi been deleted from the list of the hijackers with many apologies? No. Six years later, these 19 people are accused as being the sole perpetrators of the terror attack.